I think it's about time again. Let's make a quick call. Hey Ardit, don't you think it's about time for us to team up again? Yes, great, let's make a plan. What shall we do this time? Do you have an idea? How about the five best hacks from our friends? Oh, great idea, people will love that. Let's get started right now. The first hack is with Nouveau Drops and this goes for all colored and glitter glues. I like to pre-make them on a piece of backing of double-sided adhesive. You can use a craft sheet, you can use an empty sticker sheet, as long as it's a smooth and slippery surface where you can add your drops and take them off again. I like to pre-make them because then you one advantage is that you can pre-make your drops and let them dry so you have some at hand when you are in a hurry or you want to finish a card fast and you don't have the time to let them dry. When you add it to a sticker sheet or double-sided adhesive backing, Add it to something sturdy like a piece of cardboard. This makes it easy to pick it up and put it out of the way to let it dry in a safe spot. Another advantage to pre-making drops is that you don't mess up a card with an air bubble coming out of the bottle. Or you add a drop in the wrong place. Drops once dry can be moved around on a card to determine where you like them best. And I use the same drops as a glue because there will be no color difference and it's the perfect glue to make sure that those drops stay in place. Don't you just hate it when you've worked with glitter and it ends up like everywhere? Well, I actually don't, I don't care, but some people do. And I have a simple way to keep that glitter contained. And I have this simple trick from Ardit, who will show it also in a different way. So I have a bit of a tweaked version for this. For this I have got a sentiment out of glitter foam and you will need some crystal glaze or glossy accents that will work too. And then you just start applying a layer of the glaze. Just go over the sentiment, follow the lines. Don't squeeze the bottle because crystal glaze is very fluid and super eager to come out. Just by holding the bottle upside down the glaze will come out by itself. I found out that when it's hot that the glaze is even more fluid and my trick to help prevent that it comes running out like it's water is to put it in the fridge for about half an hour or so. And this makes it a little less eager to come out but it's still enthusiastic and way easier to work with. And once you added the layer you pick up the complete piece and put it aside to dry. And this is what it looks like after drying, a complete mess free a glitter sentiment with a glossy layer and some added dimension. Hey Ardit, how is it going? I'm about halfway through. Once you start, more and more ideas pop up. There are lots of wonderful crafty friends out there sharing some amazing ideas. So many great tips to help make our crafting easier and more fun. Absolutely. Let's get on with the rest of the hacks. And next I have more of an organizational hack. It's often very hard to see what the real color or the actual color of embossing powder is. So you can make little swatches on pretty circles and add them to the lid so you can see right away what color you have. But there's another way faster way to mark your lids. I have clear embossing ink and the pot that I want to color code. Now the embossing pad is a bit stained and this will happen. Don't worry about that because you will not see it back in the results. Just replace your ink pad every now and then if it starts to bother you. I press the lid into the embossing ink and then I sprinkle some embossing powder on top of the lid and I shake it off just like I normally would. I have an old towel underneath that will help catch any embossing powder flying around. It's an old towel, don't use your good towels for this. One of the best tips that I can give you for color swatching in your lids is to preheat your heat tool. Very important and point it at nothing because you don't want to melt anything around you. So make sure that it, it's pointing away from you and it's pointing at nothing. Very important. And while melting I keep moving the heat tool so I evenly spread the heat. Let the lid cool down and if needed you can add a second layer repeating the first step. So add some embossing ink and then sprinkle on the powder and melt it again. And look this is what you get. A pretty color swatched embossing pot lid with the actual color on top making it super easy to see what color is inside. Is this technique completely foolproof? No, it's not, because if you overheat it, you can melt your lid and then you get this. It's completely crooked. So that's why the preheating of the heat tool is very important, because your lid won't close anymore. 
So if you decide to organize your embossing powders this way, make sure to not overheat it. So be careful and keep a plastic bag at hand in case you fail horribly like I have with this lid. So you can always put it in a plastic bag and close that so the powder stays in place. The next technique is one with distress oxide inks or other inks that aren't permanent or water reactive. When you have a pre ink background like this one and you want to add another layer that's kind of hard you have to make sure that this layer stays in place so i actually have two uh, tricks to help you with that when you have a card that's smaller than your stencil it's kind of hard to just use it on your make art station or any other tool to help you hold the stencil in place so one simple trick that you can do to make sure that your card stays in place while you are working on it is to put the stencil on top of the card then you turn it over and you add some tape to the back of the card, over the edge of the card and on the stencil. And once you have the paper and stencil in place and then it's not going anywhere anymore and you can choose to add it to a make art station or other tool or just put it on your desk. That's all totally up to you. To make sure that my first ink layer is going to stay put, I add a layer of texture paste. And this is going to dry clear and this one is gloss, but you can also go for a matte version if you prefer that. And then I just apply it with my palette knife. And this is a super simple and pretty quick way to make sure that your first ink layer isn't going anywhere. And once I'm done, I take off the stencil and I'm going to put my card aside to dry. And I have another super cool embossing hack. You can do this with any regular embossing powder and you need some water. I have my colored background again. And now I'm going to squeeze the bottle halfway and you can see the drops falling. You can also take off the top of the sprayer and add some drops with the tube. For this I also preheated the heat tool because you have to work kind of fast. And then I'm going to add some embossing powder. The embossing powder is sticking on the water but only as long as the water is wet. And then I'm going to melt the powder. First I'm going over all the spots to sort of preheat them and attach them to my card. And then I'm going over all the partially melted drops again to melt them completely. And this is what you get, a super cool textured spotted embossed background. And this is the card I made with it. And this is what the card with the trapped color looks like after drying. Now this hack is something that I use all the time so I wanted to include it in this video too. I've added double sided adhesive tape to the back, I'm peeling away the backing and folding it. Then I put my complete card panel on the card, so it's straight on my card. Then I press down the corners and then I check again. You can also check with a ruler if you like. And when it's in place, I remove the backing pieces, making sure that the panel is straight on my card. Simple. And my last hack that I really think is also a great one. I'm going to add my sentiment, add some glue to the back and then I put it in place. And then I use a clear acrylic block on it to let it dry. You can also use a phone, but I use that for filming, so that won't work for me. But a clear acrylic block is a great way to hold that sentiment in place while it's drying. That were quite a few hacks to help you in your crafty endeavors. Make sure to give them a try and tell how they worked for you. Now hop on over to Ardit's video, you can find it right here and go say hi and subscribe while you are there. She will love that. And as always, make sure to keep on crafting.